We see every day as an opportunity to impact our world, to advance the kingdom, to make disciples. And Matthew, who doesn't get this feeling in his life, is sitting, collecting taxes, and Jesus walks up to him and he says, follow me. You know what Matthew does? He gets up and simply follows Jesus. And, and, and fast forward three years later, Jesus collects some more disciples, you know, some fishermen, and, 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 and they have this close relationship, and, and they're doing wonderful things for the kingdom of God. And, you know, Jesus is crucified, and, and then he is resurrected. And, and when he gets up, he tells his disciples, he says, meet me on the mountaintop. Listen to what I'm saying because this is about to be very important. Jesus tells his disciples to meet me on this mountaintop. All right? Hear me. He says, meet me on this mountaintop. And thankfully, Matthew kept really good records of his conversations with Jesus. And thankfully, he kept really good records of what happened during this time. And he tells us about it in Matthew chapter 28. Getting at verse 16, he says, then the 11 disciples, I want to pause there, I underlined that, and, and, and I drew special attention to that because I want you to understand what a disciple is. You know, oftentimes we think a disciple is something that is deeply mystical or spiritual, but in layman's term, a disciple is a person who is a pupil or an adherent of the doctrines of another. Simply put, a disciple is a follower, right? So the Bible says, or Matthew says, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, watch this now, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. You see, when we get to a place where we really want to know what God has for us, when we get to a place where we really want to hear from God, where we really want to see Jesus, we will go to the place that he has called us to go. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this morning? Uh, because some people go to certain churches because they like the program, right? Some people go to certain places because their kids have a good time, they have fun. Some people uh, go to places because they like the production. Some people go places because they like the donuts and the coffee and, 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 and they like all the, the, the smoke and the lights and that's great, you know, that we have those places like that because some people need that to be attracted uh, first to the house so that they can meet Jesus. But there are some times when we have to figure out where God has called us to. Which mountain, Jesus, should I go to? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because the, the sad thing or the ironic thing is we go to church week after week. We go to church day, Sunday after Sunday, year after year. We go to places because mom and dad went there or because, you know, that's the place that I got baptized. Or for what, whatever reason, we go to these places and, and we never see Jesus. We never hear from God. Because although we're at church, although we're on the mountain, we're on the wrong one. We're on the wrong mountain. So, so, so verse 17 says, when they saw him, because they went to the right mountain. <coughs> when they saw him, they did what? Worship. They worshiped him. But watch this. Some doubted. Now, oftentimes when we listen to stories, situations that happen with Jesus and the disciples, we're hard on them, right? We're hard on Downton Thomas. That's what, why we call him Downton Thomas. We're, we're hard on him because he didn't believe the report that Jesus had returned. But I would like to call him Downton Thomas, and here's why. Because if you read back, Jesus tells Thomas, if anyone comes to you and tells you they saw me, don't believe him. <laughs> read your Bible, it's in there. It's in there. Stop calling them down Thomas. But we're hard on the disciples oftentimes when we see situations like this. Uh, but the reality is, even though they doubt it, some of us doubt it. Usually I say, don't raise your hand. But I'm going to say this. Um, today I'm going to say, raise your, raise your hand if you've ever doubted. Yeah, my hand is, is raised because there's been times when I've doubted too. 
right? So, so we all have been there. Each of us are at a different place with God. Sometimes some of us, we, we recognize Jesus in the midst right away, right? In worship, we recognize that God is here. So some of us, we lift our hands right away. We sing to God right away. We worship God. We bow our hearts before him. We cry in his presence. We do that right away because we recognize that Jesus is on this mountain. And then some of us, we come to a place where we hear something, but we're just not sure if it was God. We feel something, but we just don't know if it's the Lord that's tugging on our hearts. It, 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 am, am I crying because the song is good, or am I crying because God, right now I feel you? Am I contemplating my life right now during this word because God is speaking? Or is it just a good motivational speech that's kind of got my emotions stirred up? And so we doubt if we're hearing God or if it's just a feeling. And so that's where the disciples were here when it says that they saw him, some worship, but some doubted. But let me tell you, if you're here this morning, I don't care, I don't care where you are. I don't know where each of you are in your walk with Jesus. You know, some of us may be completely disconnected. Some of us may be at a distance following him. And some of us may be hand in hand with Jesus. Some of us may be like, you know, the, the, the story of the, the man on the beach with the one footprint, the two footprints that turned in one, where Jesus is carrying you. And that's a great place to be. But wherever you are today in Jesus, I am certainly glad that right now you're on the right mountain to hear from God. Amen. And so verse 17, again, it says, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Even though they doubted 2,000 years ago, they still got to hear a word from Jesus. And it's the same word that we're going to get to hear today in Matthew chapter 28. The rest of it says, then Jesus came and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Verse 19 says, therefore, shout it out. Go and make disciples, right? He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Now, I want to pause here for a second because I want you to really focus on that phrase, go and make disciples. This was not a conversation that Jesus had, was having with the high priest. The people that were up on this mountaintop with Jesus hadn't spent four years in seminary. Right? The people that were up here, they weren't mega church pastors, they weren't televangelists. Right? They weren't people with some kind of special abilities or anything like that. They were a couple of fishermen and a tax collector. And Jesus says to them, go and make disciples. These simple men, the only qualification that they had is that they believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. The only qualification that they had is they believed that he was the Messiah. They believed that he was the Savior of the world. They believed that he was who he revealed to them to be. Verse 20 says, well, or let me finish reading, it says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20 says, and teaching them to obey everything. And I thought that was so peculiar that Jesus would say, teach them to obey. Do you know why Jesus would have to say to some people, teach them to obey? Do you know why? Because obedience is unnatural. <laughs> it is. Obedience is unnatural. My wife and I came home last night to our dogs who had tore up. Uh, Ava brought a gift for my, for my daughter and they got in the bag and ate some chocolate. I, 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 I was so challenged by that theory that dogs can't eat chocolate because my dogs get the chocolate all the time and, and, and they're still alive but you know but, but they have to be taught right to obey dogs have to be taught to obey watch this children have to be trained to act right <laughs> yeah, I need a little bit more amen on that. They have to be trained uh, to act right. They have to be taught to be behaved. Soldiers are instructed by drill. Right? Professionals are, are directed by, by, uh, by pamphlets or, or, or by uh, policies and directives and mentors. They're, they're taught to obey. They're, they're taught to act right. They're taught to, to behave rightly in certain situations. It's not natural. Uh, to be to, to be obedient. 
Say this, obedience is not automatic. We are born, Johnny, with a wild side. <laughs> right. We're born. I, I need to talk to somebody with a beard. Troy, we are we're born wild. Right? You know? We're, 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 not, we're not born tame and calm, right? We're, we're, you know, babies come out, most of them crying and hollering, loud, right? Little boys especially, that's why they call them the terrible twos, because once they get on their feet, you see how wild they are, wild, right? So, so we're born with this wild side, and, and that's why we have things like, like rails on the stairs. That's why we have lanes on I-25. Because if we did, we would do whatever we want. We go however we want. Anybody ever driven a car deep in Mexico? It's rough. It's scary. There are no lanes. It's just dirt road. And everybody does what is right in their own, in their own eyes. Right? So, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm, my ADHD comes out sometimes. I was, I was cutting my hair, I was cutting my hair, <laughs> and, and I realized on my clippers, it said, do not submerge in water. Why would they have to put that on clippers? Because somebody <laughs> submerged it in water. So they had to put a rule on there, or else people would die. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So, so there are some rules uh, that we have to follow. There are some things that we have to obey. There are certain authorities that we have to uh, we have to walk in agreement with that will save our life. But obedience to God will save your soul. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? And, and so he says to, this, to his disciples, he says, teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And the great news, if you look at this, the great news is that we don't have to do that with our, uh, by ourselves because the next line says, and this is Jesus speaking, he says, and surely I am with you always. How long? Always. How long? Always. Until tomorrow? Always. Next week? Always. He says, always to the very end of the age. Thank <laughs> you.